Hello and welcome back. Another day, another logic challenge. And even though the title of the video or the practice sheet maybe says alpha numeric, it is best to think of it as a simple problem to do with logic and basic addition, not even subtraction, just basic addition of digits. Once we have that kind of an approach, we are ready for any kind of a challenge rather than thinking that when I see a problem like this, do I need any pre-theory? So of course we'll solve this and one of the side agendas as usual would be to notice that all we need is deductive logic and observing it carefully, trying out various scenarios, beginning to play with it and rest everything will just be step after step after step as usual. So as usual, I'm assuming that you have tried out the problem, you're not just uh, jumping into the solution directly spend some time with it, struggle with it and then you are coming here for the discussion for maximum value. Okay, so the story was quite straightforward. Uh, these are two six digit numbers which are being added and the digits have been replaced by a letter. Digits from anywhere from 0 to 9 and they are mapped to one letter each and one letter only. So you can't have two letters representing the same digit. That is the basic assumption of the story. And you're supposed to essentially figure out which letter represents which digit. So on the surface, remember, everything looks complicated. So essentially, you have to zoom in, make this very, very big for yourself and pick up any corner and start observing details about it. And some things will stand out. For example, and there, there could be multiple starting points. This is one of them. If I notice the F and F giving you F, and I start thinking, can it be 1 and 1? If it is 1 and 1, this is going to be 2. That is a different digit. Uh, therefore, a different letter should have been there. So 1 and 1 is not going to work. So hit pause right now and try out other digits which might work. Really try and do that for yourself in case you haven't already figured that out. So try 2, 2. You will get 4. It, the logic is not going to work. 3, 3, 6, 4, 4, 8. 5, 5, 10, 0, not going to work. 6, 6, 12, not going to work. 7, 7, 14 or 4, not going to work. I hope uh, I'm making sense. I'm not putting pen on paper. I'm just thinking in the head right now, right? 8, 8, 16, 6, not going to work. 9, 9, 18, 9 and 9 and 8, not going to work. What is going to work? 0 is going to work. So that is a deduction that anybody can make without any training just simply by observation and trying it out. So I have played a little bit with the problem and I have already figured out that f is equal to 0. Once I do that, I can put up a 0 wherever there is an f in the story. So very easy deduction and a very easy placement as well. If I just stick to this zero story that I understand that instead of F I have a zero, some two digits add up and they give you a zero. So notice this and start thinking about that. If I have a four and four, will I get a zero? If I have a three and three, will I get a zero? Uh, if I have a six and six, will I get a zero? And once again, uh, my invitation is obviously to figure it out by yourself. Hit pause and try out a few values and hopefully where <clears throat> so I'm pausing for you and waiting for you to think. So let's say if you figured it out, H is going to be 5. Now somewhere in your mind there will be voices going that there might be a carry over also, right? So no problem, step by step we can think about that any process given in any problem, right? So it's a good opportunity to now think of possible carryovers. What is the maximum carryover that can happen? If I maximize my digits 9 and 9, I will get an 18 and there will be a carryover of 1 only. Try 99 and 99, right? So 9 and 9 again 18, the carryover is 1. 9 and 9 18 and 1 19, the carryover is still 1. Maybe try this process out for 999 and triple 9. And what you will observe is that the carryover is not more than one in any of these scenarios. So this, when I looked at this problem, I was thinking that, okay, five and five will work for me. But what if there is some other scenario? But what if there is some other scenario of carryover? So I figured out, I figured out 
So maximum carryover in the story can be 1. And if I say 1 is being added and then I'm getting 0, that means the sum must have been 9, which cannot happen because if the sum is 9, that means h should become 4 and a half, which is not allowed because you only have fixed integers, right? So I understand that this carryover is not happening in the story. Please uh, stay with the story, hit pause, rewind, figure this out all for yourself, right? So I am very uh, sure now that h is going to be 5 and 5 and I have observed another thing that even if I add a 3 digit number or if I make it a 4 digit number and I make the biggest possible sum the carryover is going to be 1 only so not only I have figured out that h is 5 I have also figured out that a is going to be equal to 1 so not only I have figured out that h is 5, I have also figured out that a is going to be equal to 1. So anywhere you see a, you can put up a 1 and a 1 in the story. So a recap after cleaning up, f is equal to 0. I also figured out that h has to be 5. My figuring out is not enough. I hope you figured out that h has to be 5. While playing and while trying to figure out the possible values of h or maybe somewhere else in the story thinking about this, I also figured out that no matter how many or no matter what the size of the number, if I add two same size numbers, maximum carryover is going to be 1. So I have also figured out that A is equal to 1. Hopefully in your notebook, you are putting up 1 instead of A in another diagram of the same story. I am going to cut corners and play with this big framework or make smaller stories later. So now I have figured out that a is equal to 1 and if a is 1, I said h is 5. 5 and 5 gives you 10. 0 is fine here because f was 0. But the carryover from this story is plus 1. Now plus 1 and 1 gives you 2 and the result is essentially 11. So 2 plus what gives you 11 and your answer very quickly should be that b is equal to 9. So this is going very very fast. And notice the moment I start the game, progress happens. If I look at the problem, if I look at the problem and I think of whether I have done this in my syllabus or not, most likely it is not going to happen. So I hope you learn that playfulness with any sort of a problem, even without any training. Training is great, not a problem, right? So now if I look at my table, I've got a lot of things figured out. Maybe I'll make a new version. So I have a 9 instead of a B. I have a 5. I have a 1, I have another 1, I have G, I don't know the value of right now, I have a 0 and I have a 0, I don't know the value of K right now, I do know the sum final values A or 1, under that A I have F is equal to 0, under that A I have J, right now I haven't figured out the value of J, H and H I already figured out and A I already know as 1, even in the table below, I in the row below again I have 1 and 1 and I have 0 and I have G and C that I haven't figured out so move that particular snapshot to prime central property and once again I want to dive deep and observe one particular piece of information I've already figured out a lot captured the new information notice G and K giving you a total of 1 now a 0 and a 1 could have given you a 1 but beyond that if you are getting a 1 it must be coming from an 11 because 0 is already ruled out g can't be 0 because f is 0 k can't be 1 or g can't be 1 because a is already 1 so 0 1 story cannot work that means this sum is definitely going to be 11 that means from here there is a carryover of plus 1 1 plus 1 plus 0 that means c has to be 2 so another piece of the story worked out definitively, surely, that C has to be 2. Return to your GNK story. Something, two digits are giving you 11. What are the possibilities? I am thinking of G and K 
adding up to 11 i could have a 2 and a 9 but can i have a 2 and a 9 c has taken over 2 and b has taken 9 so this story is not going to work for me what else i could have a 3 comma 8 or a 8 comma 3 the sum will be 11 let me try the story out whether this works or not so let me see whether 3 and 8 works let's say if g is 3 and k is 8 the sum is 11 one gets carried over, C is 2, fine, not a problem. Now, nothing is getting carried over here. So, 1 plus J is equal to G. You are saying G is 3. That means J will have to be 2. Again, all of these conclusions have to be made by you, right? So, please pay attention to that. So, this story is not going to work for me because C is already 2. So, how can J be 2? So, this 3, 8 story is also not going to work for me. And what is this approach that we are using? Haven't we done this in hundreds of sets? And didn't we start our journey with this building and testing cases? You don't have a fixed answer. You try out values and see whether they work or not. In fact, don't even expect a fixed answer because you will see in a minute that you are getting multiple answers from the story and then the questions will help you choose further, right? So 3.8 is not going to work for me. 8 and 3. If G is 8, K is 3, sum is 11, not a problem. 1 gets carried over, C is 2, not a problem. 1 and J is equal to G and now you are saying G is 8, so J will have to be 7. Any conflict, any rule being broken, no, not at all. So this story will work for me. Not only that, I also know that J will be 7. So this is one of my stories. Now a mistake some people will make here is they will jump at this opportunity and uh, try and answer the questions very very quickly. The first couple of questions will work anyway but in the second couple of questions they might be a problem because they are based on this having this question having multiple answers right. So great you have figured out 8 and 3 but maybe slow down because there could be other stories as well for example 4 and 7. I will not think of 5 and 6 because 5 was already gone with H. So that story is out but 4 and 7 can also work. So let me try those out. G is 4 and K is 7 let's say for starters. 4 and 7, 11 carried over 2 not a problem. G is 4, 1 plus J is equal to uh, in this story in this particular version 4 and so J will have to be 3. Is anybody else 3? Any rule being broken? No. J is equal to 3. Not a problem. Let me try and flip the story. Can it work like 7 and 4? Let's try that out. 7 and 4. 7, 4, 11. 1 gets carried over. <coughs> C is still 2. G I am saying now is 7. In that case, J will become 6. Is anybody else 6 or is that creating a problem? Do check it out for yourself. So even this works for me. Now I think I am pretty much done with the story. Put this here as well, 8, 3 and J equal to 7. So these are your possible multiple answers for J, K and G, K and J. F, C, H, A and B have been worked out completely. So now I think answering the questions is not going to be too much of a, not a challenge at all. So I am leaving that part up to you and the problem is worked out and again the main agenda is not this particular problem but to learn and realize that any problem requires the same kind of approach right the same mindset look deeper make small reductions fill out part of the story with the parts that you cannot fill out try out the cases possible what are the possibilities in the story not the first time we are talking about this and hopefully not the last time at all so this is it for this session. I hope you solve the questions by yourself. I will see you really soon.